Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be enjoying a war drama, indie film, entitled Unknown Soldier. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins in June of 1941. Finnish soldiers of a machine gun company are ordered to return to barracks, pack up and prepare for Soviet advance. Later, the whole regiment sings their national anthem before departing on board trucks. The following month, in the early morning hours, Heitinen, a non-commissioned officer, hears bombardments from a distance and goes to wake up everybody. Afterward, Vilho, the company sergeant, gives a pep talk to psych up the soldiers. Later, they regroup with the whole regiment for a frontal assault. To many of the men, it's their baptism of fire. Kariluido orders his men to move forward, but after a few paces, they get pinned down. An older officer sees Kariluido and his men too frightened to move. So, he goes to their position and fearlessly advances. After taking a few steps, the old officer gets hit by mortar fire. The men gather their courage and charges, but the enemies were gone when they reached the other side. Soon afterward, they move on to a different location, deep into the forest, and are met with heavy resistance. Kariluido has already lost a couple of men and wounded many others. Vilho gambles and flanks the pillbox. He threw a satchel charge when he got close enough, blowing the enemy to smithereens. Kariluido and the others take the opportunity to move and clear the enemy entrenchment. After the encounter, they march again deeper into the woods. The company was relaxing and having a meal when it was cut short when they heard something. Vilho signals the troops to be cautious. They see an unarmed man running and quickly surround him. The man clearly has no will to fight, and Vilho orders Leto to take the Russian back to HQ, but Leto has other plans. When they were about a few meters away, Leto shots the man in the back. Moments later, after weeks of marching, the whole regiment reaches the Russian border. Meanwhile, a bike messenger arrives at the house of Ontario Roca, a Winter War veteran. His wife sees Ontario reading the letters and immediately knows he was called again to fight. The next day, Roca leaves for the front lines with his childhood friend, Pa. Soon, they reach their assignment and goes greet the company commander casually. The company commander warns him not to be informal and show discipline, but the veteran just shrugs it off. Although Roca is rough with the company commander, he quickly makes friends with his platoon. The next day, they prepare to assault the enemy position on the other side of a lake. After a barrage of artillery fire, the Finns board wooden speed boats and strike the enemy across the water. Being the veteran, Roca takes the lead in the charge. He instructs Kariluoto to throw grenades at every corner before they rush the trenches. It's an effective strategy, and they manage to push the Russians out. Days passed, and they continued to march deep into Russian territory without encountering any resistance until one evening. A forward team scouts the area for enemies. Leto hears some movements, and when he takes a close look, he gets shot multiple times. The other members of the patrol retreat immediately. Leto puts the barrel into his mouth, but before he can pull the trigger, he bleeds out to death. Subsequently, the Finns ambush a T-34 medium tank escorted by a couple dozens of Russian infantries. Their anti-tank rifle didn't do any damage to the Russian tank. So, Heitinen grabbed an anti-tank mine and threw it toward the incoming tank. But it didn't explode. Heitinen crawls towards the mine and throws it again. This time it blows the tank useless. The Finns managed to overwhelm the enemy, and soon after, the Ruskies retreated. In September 1941, they passed by Soviet Karelia. The Russian resisted from time to time, leaving many Finns wounded or dead. When Kariluido's troops reached the nearest city, Petroskoy, their allies have already settled in. The following day, to commemorate the victory in taking the town, high officials from the Finnish army visit the city, and a military parade ensues. In the momentary peace, Rocco, Heitinen and Vanhala loiter around the city. They spot two children and give them food. Afterward, they visit a woman named Vera. The Finn soldiers hang out at Vera's place with two other women. At first, Vera is somewhat hostile in questioning the soldiers but is eased after Haydn and gives a very witty and honest answer about the war. As a matter of fact, she was so impressed by the Haydn and that she gave him a kiss. Haydn and returned to the barracks a happy man. Later that night, the young lad couldn't resist his urges and sneaks back to Vera's place, and they sleep together. The soldiers are woken from their sleep at dawn and ordered to gear up. With the war intensifying, they are headed to Sfer and fend off incoming Russian troops. Weeks passed, and Rocco and a few others were patrolling the snowy forest when they saw a firing squad executing two men for insubordination. After the sentence was carried out, they continued to patrol the forest. January of 1942, 
a machine gunner sees the enemy and warns his allies. Not a minute later, a fierce firefight ensues. Many of the Finns start retreating for some reason, causing disarray in the defense. They pull back to another defensive position. Later that night, Roka volunteers to watch the left flank, and just as luck, he spots two enemy platoons navigating through the thick snow. He orders his assistant to keep on handing him full magazines. Roka starts picking the enemy one by one with a clear line of sight until he massacres all of them. When the sun rose, traces of last night's carnage haunted the snowy battlefield. Roka's indifferent about the encounter and comes up to one of the bodies to loot a pair of boots. Roka's feet earned him leave for a couple of days which he gladly spent with his family back in Isthmus. In June 1942, Hitler visited the Marshal of Finland personally to congratulate him on the success of the advance. Meanwhile, the men on the ground celebrate by drinking their fill of homemade alcohol. After hours of drinking, Vilho visits the officers' quarters and starts making trouble off his head. Later, some officers carry him over to the other to sober up. The company spends their days in a dugout for the following days, taking turns manning the trenches in case of a Russian offensive. Soon, fresh faces join the company as replacements. One of the newbies is a teenager named, Hauhia. Roka is ordered to teach the young lad the ropes and show him around the trenches. The old veteran warns the youngster not to show his head, or else it would cost his life. Later, the alarm sounds, and the whole company rushes towards the post and sees the young soldier lifeless. Once again, it's winter, and Roka's company continues to guard the trenches. The soldiers tried to lift their spirits up by singing when Christmas came. At the same time, back at Roka's house, his wife and children sing the same tune. Seasons pass, and it's July, Roka gets called to the company commander's office due to an insubordination incident earlier. As always, Roka stays arrogant and unyielding even in front of his direct superior. One evening, Roka's manning his post when it suddenly gets bombarded. He immediately checks his periscope for movements in no man's land. He felt something was off, and his instincts kicked in. Turns out he's right, a few Soviets managed to come close, but fortunately, Roka's quick wits save him. He manages to kill a couple of Russians and capture one. They later learned that the Soviets were meant to capture a prisoner, but instead, it resulted in the opposite. Also, after they learned that the Soviets they captured were an officer, the Finns couldn't help but celebrate and joy. Roka later escorts the prisoner to the officer's cabin. He is confronted by another officer, but this time, the officer lets it pass, warning him that there wouldn't be a second time. After achieving another impressive feat, Roka earned another 14-day leave from the front lines. As always, he returns home to his wife and kids. He helps out with the farm work and takes care of their newly born baby, but days pass quickly, and soon after, Roka returns to the action. In December of 1943, some of the men could already feel that they're losing the war. The usual artillery fire and bombardment continue. By June 1944, the whole regiment retreats from Sverin toward their old border. The Soviet troops are advancing at a rapid pace. Roka's family gets wind of the news, and they immediately pack up and leave the farm. Meanwhile, Kariluido goes on leave to marry the love of his life. They've only been married for a few days, but the officer has to leave for the front lines. As soon as he regroups with his company, he can feel the tense ambience. They're back to fighting in Finnish lands, and the Russians are advancing alarming. The Finn soldiers choose a strategic location for an ambush and start making foxholes. But the Russian starts bombing their area. Heidenen crawls out of the foxhole to save his fellow, but a bomb strikes nearby, blinding him. Afterward, some of the crew comforts Heidenen, and later, he is carried to an ambulance. The ambulance is ambushed on the way to the hospital, and the car catches fire. Heidenen finds the door and opens it. As soon as he and the other wounded soldiers get out, they are shot dead. Back at the front lines, Kari Luido receives orders from the Major to hold their ground no matter what but Vilho figures that they need to cripple an enemy position to break enemy formation. As always, Roka wreaks havoc, killing every enemy he encounters. The others follow his lead. On a different front, Kariluido and his men get pinned down. He orders them to move forward, or they wouldn't gain ground. None of his men are moving. The officer takes a deep breath, presses on the attack, and shouts at others to follow his lead, but he gets shot multiple times after a few meters. On his last breath, he remembers his wife. With the overwhelming defeat on multiple fronts, Vilho gets permission to fall back. He orders his men to toss the heavy machine guns in the pond except for one and prioritize carrying the wounded. After hours of marching, some of the injured takes their own life rather than enduring the pain. They continue to march until morning. 
When they reach the fallback position, the Major scolds Vilho for falling back too soon and dumping the machine guns. Vilho tries to explain that the men are disheartened by the consecutive losses and that he tosses the firearms so that they can carry more wounded. Vilho and the others are tasked to defend a strategic road. Sure enough, Russian armor and infantry traverse the said road, and a fierce battle ensues. With nothing but satchel charges to combat the tanks, Vilho runs down the hill, and crawls to the ditch until he gets close enough to throw the satchel. He then tosses the bomb and blows the tank. But he gets hit in the process, killing him instantly. With positions lost, the soldiers panic and retreat. The Major scolds the soldiers for being a coward. He then shoots a soldier for ignoring him. He continues to threaten to kill anyone who flees, but to his surprise, a tank shows up. The troops run to the side of the road. Meanwhile, the Major gets hit by artillery fire and can't stand up. He was later crushed by the tank. The Finns continue to fall back until their last defensive position. Roca orders his men to cross the river while he and a few others cover them. When the young ones made it to the other side, it was Roca and Pa's turn. Pa gets hit, and his pal, Roca, carries him across. But Roca gets shot, the old veteran continues and somehow manages to make it. His men carry him a bit inland, but soon he bleeds out. The last thing he saw was the bright sky. Vanhala and the others continued to hold their position and hide in their foxholes until the armistice on the 4th of September 1944, when the government of Finland surrendered to the Soviets and its allies. The movie ends with scenes from after the war. Children reunite with their mothers, men clear out destroyed property, a lonely mother sulks and mourns the death of all his sons, a widow carries on with her life after the loss of her husband, and lastly, a father goes back to his family. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos like this and to help the channel grow.